Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuang. Let's draw the head of Saurophaganax with an open mouth. When a Saurophaganax opens its mouth, we should note that its upper teeth would appear shorter. Some even shorter teeth are basically invisible and entirely covered by the lip. When viewed from the inside, this row of teeth would appear longer. When drawing its lower jaw, we should first pay attention to the shape that the root of its teeth formed. Locate and draw this part first, then the lips. The lips would look loose, meaning much bigger. Now, let's draw the head of Saurophaganax, with its mouth open. We start from the tip of its mouth, and outline its upper lip. A line curving downward like this. Here is the jugal bone. Next, let's draw its nose. Here is its nose and nostril. Then, there are the keratinous structures above the nose. The end of the keratin was its lacrimal horn, resembling a pair of cat ears. Behind the lacrimal horn was the brow bone wrapped by a keratinous structure. Then, we draw its eye. Around this eye, we can draw thicker eyelids and folds. Next, we use very light lines to draw the ant orbital fenestra. Now, let's move to draw the teeth. The teeth were relatively complicated. We draw the lateral teeth first. The outermost teeth are blocked by the lip, and only their tips are exposed, which are pretty short. Since there is no lip blocking this side, the teeth on the inside appear longer. We use shadow to represent the lip on the other side. Then, we draw the muscles in its mouth. This area can be shaded. There was a relatively large opening here, like some lizards and crocodiles today. When it closed its mouth, this opening would accommodate the lower jaw muscles. We use dotted lines to draw the gums of the mandible and then show the mandible teeth along the line of the gums. The gums of lipped animals may be thicker, so the teeth only have very short parts exposed. We draw the tongue in the middle. Let's complete the tooth roots and gums. The gums on that side can be drawn very thickly to simultaneously show the lip on that side. Next, we draw the gums on this side. Followed by the slits between the gums and lips. and add a little shadow to the corner of the mouth. Now, we draw the lower jaw, which is thinner at the front and fuller toward the back because of the muscles at the posterior. Then, let's draw the neck and throat. Draw its ear here. 
there was a muscle here at the back of the head. Draw some folds between the neck and head. Also, draw some folds around the eye. Followed by some larger scales behind the eye. Then, we draw the keratinous structure on its nose. First, we draw the rough surface of the keratin, where there would be some textures, such as growth lines or cracks. Next, we use some thinner lines to make the face fuller and use such lines to highlight its mandibular muscles. Then, shade this part of the lower jaw to make it more three-dimensional. Next, we draw the scales on its lips. The scales along the edge of the lips can be drawn slightly larger, resembling those of some modern lizards. When drawing, we don't need to draw the shape of each scale, slight shadows will do. Below were rows of scales that would gradually become smaller. Enhance the shading on the inside of the lips to make them appear some distance away from the gums. The interior of the mouth can be drawn pitch dark to show a deeper look. Draw a loop of larger scales on the edge of the upper lip. And then use dotted lines to show rows of gradually smaller scales. The scales on the maxilla were getting larger and larger. Then, we use lighter lines to show the relatively soft skin on the antorbital fenestra, making it look slightly wrinkled. Then, we refine some details and add some shadows. These shadows can be represented by a row of dots. Finally, we draw some structural lines on the neck to make the mouth muscles fuller and rounder. In this way, we've finished drawing the mouth open head of Saurophaganax.